3D printers are basically Legos for adults or people like me, and it's also changed the way that we design our products. So that's what we're talking about today. Hi, my name is Harrison. I'm with the Luxury Pergola. Uh, I'm the Chief Operating Officer, and I work on uh, the operations here, getting things to you, as well as product design. 3D printers are all about rapid prototyping, design, print, design, print, and that allows you to iterate a lot faster than looking at a model over you know, the course of four hours to see what it would actually look like or what wouldn't work in physical space. So the common uses of a 3D printer are really gonna be uh, tchotchkes around the house. So if you wanna print things that are toys for your kids, assuming that they're safe, you print them out of a material that's safe to be around kids. The most common use is for like, organization and storage. There's a, an entire suite that you can find of a thing called Gridfinity is a very popular one where basically you can print these grids and then everything you print trays uh, and categorizers are printed to mold to that same grid. So that's really, really common. That's what I use in my garage for my 3D printer. All my tools are hanging on custom 3D printed parts. So there's multiple different ways you can find models like that because a lot of people are making models and then most people share them publicly with everyone for you to use, assuming you don't try and sell their model uh, without their license because uh, there is copyright infringement if you try and do that. But places like Thingverse, uh, Bamboo Handy, uh, CG Trader, or you could teach yourself basic CAD and then allow yourself to model what you need to fit your needs and then print it and use it, which is, I think, incredible. And then the last use would be prototyping or designing parts that don't want to meet production yet. So in our case, we make everything out of aluminum. Milling aluminum into a specific shape to see if it works is really expensive. So you can buy a printer, print out a shape, test it, see what it looks like in real space, if the proportions look right, if things are fitting generally together without the correct tolerances yet put in place. You can iterate on ideas, I think, a lot, lot faster. And that's what we use it for. So we'll print a part out and test it together. And we may find out that, you know, you can't fit an angle driver into that space or an impact driver or a bit set. It's either too tight and you didn't notice that on the 3D model because you're zoomed so far in or, you know, something doesn't quite fit or work in real life that you didn't notice on a 3D model. And that is what's great about 3D printing. So I got into 3D printing mainly out of necessity. Um, I didn't know anything about 3D printing, um, but we were designing a new product and I was really afraid that something wasn't going to quite work in real, like in the real world. And I didn't wanna buy the extrusions hoping that it was going to work. And so then I started researching 3D printers. I almost bought a metal 3D printer. That would have been awesome, but way too expensive. Uh, and then I went down to Micro Center and bought a bamboo printer, printed out there, and then from then on, off to the races. I printed every single part and we print every single part before we buy it now at this point. So personally, what gear do I have? So I have, um, being myself, when I get into a hobby, I like to get something I don't feel like I'll never ever need to replace or have issues with. So I got a bamboo printer. I know people have their favorites. Some people like certain printers over other printers, but I didn't wanna to have to build it. I didn't wanna to have to set it up and I wanted to be able to plug it in and basically run it right away. So I have a Bamboo X1 Carbon, which is of course the most expensive model that they sell, with an AMS feed. An AMS is this big box that goes on top of the printer or next to the printer that can feed four different rolls. AMS stands for Auto Material Selector Switch? Something, something like that. So it stands for one of those. But what it allows you to do is switch colors uh, or materials on demand whenever you want. Normally you have one spool that's loaded directly to your extruding head. And that means that if you wanna switch or do two colors within the same print, you can't really do that, at least not easily. So the creature comforts that come with something that is very expensive are very nice. And for a business, it makes sense. Uh, for me personally, if I was just starting to get into 3D printing, the P1P, it's a fantastic printer. It does everything you need it to do. It comes set up, comes calibrated, but ultimately you can get into 3D printing for under $200 and allows you to at least get a start with it uh, and see if it's something that you would want to do um, and definitely have fun and print some parts that would help you around the house. So for the basic printer, that's what it is. In terms of modeling the shape, so I'll typically either model a shape in Fusion 360, in SolidWorks, 
or an AutoCAD Inventor. I've used all three at this point. My favorite for just basic 3D parts is Fusion because I'm familiar with it. And it's really easy to use for someone who did not study engineering because I didn't study engineering. All right, if you're trying to build a shape in 3D space, don't listen to anything I just said about Fusion. Fusion's great if you want a precise CAD modeling. And CAD is really helpful for exact measurements. But it takes, I think, more skill to use something like CAD than it does to take a free software like Blender and use that. So I learned Blender first. And Blender, I think, while uh, it is still a 3D modeling software and you do have to learn the hotkeys and the ways to use different things, I think it's way more user friendly and easy to get grips of uh, to start with because you're using things in 3D space and you can uh, move vertices or points of the object in a 3D model in space when you need to. Whereas CAD, like you gotta go back to the sketch. Blender's free, you can model things in there. It has dimensions in there. You can use it as a CAD software. It's not perfect for it. It's not designed for it, but it can be used that way. Uh, you can import things and mod and like edit a th existing 3D model in Blender. Way better software for something like first time users, I think, unless you're really planning dimensional accuracy, in which case just start with Fusion, learn that. Uh, you just gotta pay the price because Fusion I think is 500 bucks a year right now on a discount, whereas Blender is free today for you and for everyone else. In either Fusion or SolidWorks or AutoCAD Inventor, uh, you can export them then into a 3D model type file, STL or STEP file. Both of those work. I'll usually then import it into Bamboo uh, Studio, which is the software that Bamboo printers use, and then I can print it from there. Now the Bamboo X1 Carbon, what I love about that printer is I can monitor it from anywhere. I can look at the camera where I can watch it printing and see if there's been a first layer defect, which if you get into printing, you'll learn all about, uh, or if there's a spaghetti issue, basically it makes spaghetti instead of actually printing. I hate when I accidentally make spaghetti. Yeah, right? <laughs> From a filament end, I predominantly use PLA uh, because it's easy, it prints well, uh, and it's affordable for the most part. There's a, a litany of options, you know, glass filled nylon, carbon fiber reinforced nylon, ABS. Uh, now, some of these also you need to know produce toxic fumes. As far as I'm aware, PLAs are going to be something that doesn't need to be printed in an enclosed environment because it is a biodegradable uh, polymer. And so it's not supposed to put off any toxic fumes. Now, I don't know, I can smell the printer when it runs. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not a scientist on the toxicity level of all these different polymers. So let's say that we're designing a product in-house. I'll walk you through the whole list of how I go from start to finish. Uh, the way we start with is we go into, these days, SolidWorks, uh, it used to be Fusion 360. We'll sketch out the part, uh, we'll extrude it, because you always sketch everything in 2D, extrude it out. Then you model it and make whatever changes you want, chamfers, fillets, bevels, whatever you need to, change your dimensions. And then at that point, we'll print it. Um, say it's a great idea at that point, we like it on the computer, we'll print it. We're really low barrier to have an idea to print because printing is so cheap. You know, the filament's 20 bucks a roll or 30 bucks a roll. You might as well print the part and see how it looks, at least a small version of it. So print the part, see what it looks like, uh, usually iterate on it. Uh, at the moment, our most recent product we're looking to create to release later this year, we've iterated at least 25 times. So we'll iterate on the product. And then once we have one that we really like, we'll send it to whoever our fabricator is. If it's an extrusion, we'll send it there for a quote and then we receive it and then we start shipping it off to you guys. So mistakes or hangups that you could have in the 3D printing process, 3D printing world. First, I would highly recommend to see if someone's already made the product or the part first before you decide to design it or make it yourself. But if you're prototyping a new part for yourself, then the biggest point there is to get it right in the computer first and give yourself the flexibility to make changes. What I mean by that is when you use a software like Fusion, for example, you can uh, roll your history back, make a change, and then advance it forward again. Most CAD softwares are like this now. That flexibility gives you the ability to iterate a lot more effectively than totally redesigning the part multiple times. If you are getting into 3D modeling and you're getting into CAD, uh, learn how the history markers work at the bottom and learn a software that gives you the capacity to make those changes. Watch videos, don't throw yourself at it like I did. 
learn the process first. It'll save you a lot of headaches. The second thing would be from the 3D printing aspect, like learn how to calibrate the machine, learn how to fix the machine. For me, uh, the bamboo printer, um, the biggest pitfall that I'll typically have is gonna be a first layer defect. You need some sort of thing to make that first layer print correctly, because that is the base. If you think of it as a foundation of a home, that is the base at which the rest of the part gets built. You might need to put a glue on there or something else to make sure that it adheres properly. If you have something like my bamboo printer, it comes with a textured PEI plate, which means you don't need to put anything on it, which is amazing. That gives you the ability to not have to worry that much, but still your first layer needs to be solid. If it's not, you might as well like stop the print and give up and print it again, right? Quit your job. Quit your job. Out, sell your car, your house. <laughs> it's over, okay? <laughs> Throw the thing away. Three of the biggest variables are the bed temp, um, the nozzle temperature, and the speed at which you're trying to run everything. So I imagine a lot of people that are watching this video that are getting into 3D parts and 3D printing in general, you bought a 3D printer because you thought it's whiz bang. Uh, and you started printing some stuff from some pre-made parts. So you're already printing parts, but you're starting to feel like you're running out of things to print because you printed all the things you found right away that you needed, and you really kind of needed this other thing, and it'd be nice if you knew how to design it in CAD in order to do that thing. So my recommendation would be to buy a license for Fusion 360. You don't need SOLIDWORKS, it's a $5,000 software. You do not need SOLIDWORKS. And then, once you're in it, watch a video or two. There are several people online that can teach you how to use Fusion 360, but the basics, sketch your shape in 2D, extrude the shape into 3D, okay? then start changing things about it. The best way to learn how to model your shapes is to put as much of your final design into your original 2D sketch. All the different chamfers and fillets and things you can put into that first 2D sketch, you should. Because then after that, whatever you're going to extrude, revolve, however you're gonna get that sketch into 3D space, um, you are gonna keep all those measurements rather than after you've you know, let's say you've extruded a flat shape, then you'd have to go in and fill at each of those edges rather than just having that fillet built into the sketch to begin with. So that's basically 3D printing. That's way more information than you probably needed to know. But if you want to buy a pergola from a company who originally demodeled it in a 3D printer, you can find a link to our website down below, uh, luxurypergola.com. You can buy from us, from our family, from our 3D printing tested models. Uh, and you can check out all our aluminum products, all our pergolas open and close. It's awesome. And thanks for watching the video. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. We'll try and respond. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube-y things. Hit double click the dislike button. Double click the dislike button? Yeah, because you click it, it dislikes. And then you click it again, it dicks it away. So if you didn't like the video, double click that dislike button. Just show them how much you disliked it.